Galloway's support through sight loss. Galloway's get active. Presents John Helt sailing the tall ships. Joining us today, we've got John, who's one of our service users, and John is uh, blind and he's done a lot of sailing on the tall ships and other sorts of things as well. So, hiya, John, you, you're there with us. Hi, James. Can you hear, you can hear me okay? Alexa, play. You can hear me okay, John, yeah? Yeah. Right. So, John, if you just want to start off and just tell us a little bit about yourself and... Alexa, uh, stop. What you say? Just tell us a little bit about yourself, John, um, sort of where you're from and, and what sort of, of things you do with regards to your sailing. Okay, uh, my name's John Held. Um, I'm um, visually impaired. I've got uh, RP, which is retinitis pigmentosa. I found out in uh, 2009, uh, uh, sorry, 92, 1992. Uh, and in 1993, I came back to Liverpool and uh, I uh, joined Henshaws and 94, uh, I, I got involved with the writing group and art groups. Um, and in 96, my friend who was part of the art group persuaded me to join Day Centre Trinity Road. Uh, and uh, where I started getting involved with uh, people, arts and culture and crafts. And uh, in the writing group, we found a member organised uh, a float along Liverpool with the um, Lord Mayor's procession, which I, got, I was uh, a pretend captain. And when we were doing the float the day before, because we had all visually impaired people on, on the float for the Lord Mayor's procession, the day before, a friend from the Trinity Road Day Centre, Frank, phoned me up to ask me if I wanted to come on a proper ship, the Lord Nelson which I couldn't do because it was too close to doing this pretend ship. Um, and that's when, I, uh, after that, we did the flows. I, got, I went to the Lord Mayor's pre uh, party, the procession and everything. Uh, but then I did uh, 16 sails on the Lord Nelson and, and tenacious tall ships. Um, and I haven't looked back ever since. It's been a bug and I, I've got involved uh, and it's good. Um, there are two ships in the organisation of the uh, JST, which is the Jubilee Sailing Trust. One is the Lord Nelson and one is the Tenacious. Uh, the Tenacious is the bigger, taller, wider one. Uh, the Lord Nelson is one that is more an authentic uh, tall ship. The Tenacious is 65 metres long and its mast is 39.7 metres high. The Lord Nelson is 54.7 metres long and 31 metres high for the for the mast. And I've climbed both of those masts and mm. they're really good. Um, so um, uh, on, on board the Tenacious, so I'll take you along the Tenacious uh, one because uh, they're both similar but have a difference. Uh, as you come up the gangplank, uh, you come on to the bridge area and there'll be the chart room where in the chart room you plot the maps and you have a log which you'll uh, log in the different days of the sky, uh, the temperatures and things and the barometers. Then you'll come along, there's the compass on the port side, there's the helm uh, in the middle on the bridge where uh, People, you, when you get a coordinate, you've got to repeat it so that you know that you're uh, sailing on that coordinate. And then as you come down the stairs on the port side, you go along, down, forward, along, uh, and and come back along starboard. And then in the uh, under the um, bridge, you'll have the galley area. There's upper mess, there's lower mess. Upper mess is where the the main crew will eat their meals and the ongoing watch. And down below is where everybody else will have their meals, um, you know, breakfast, dinner and tea. And the food is really good. The galley 
is to the on the port side uh, at the side of the from the upper mess. One person in each mess will join the galley to be a mess man, uh, and the, their duties include doing uh, preparing and cleaning and washing dishes, uh, and the cook will do the cooking. And the meals are really good. Um, the um, the day usually starts off with um, uh, breakfast, then smoko, which is your smoko happy hours. Smoko is uh, like your breaks of uh, you know biscuits, cheese, cakes. Um, happy hour is like it's not happy hour as a, a day. Uh, a quick cheap drinks in the bar. It's um, you know doing ship shape for the sh- for keeping the ship clean and uh, sh- you know tidy. You know duties includes like uh, cleaning the steps, uh, hoovering up, uh, cleaning the decks, cleaning the the bar, the bell, brasses and Grassing up all the grass pieces on the ship, um, yeah. So it's 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 quite a good uh, job of doing all those, um, right? Um, you know, and the um, the crew comp- is a, the, there is the captain who will plot the the journey of the of the sail. There's the first mate who gives out all the orders and the instructions. Uh, the second mate is the navigator. He, he's the one who controls and, and uh, sets the sail for the when the navigation goes on. There's the uh, cook, and you should get on the best side of the cook uh, because they're the ones who will give you all your meals, and they, they've got an ass who will get you to prepare and do all the meals. Um, there's the boatman, who, who's the fixer, the mender, who will give out all the jobs, and he has his... Uh, assistance is volunteers um, and then there's the chief engineer and the assistant engineer um, um, yeah so it, sailing along is good I've uh, done 16 sails as I've said um, you know and um, I've uh, sailed up to the Canaries I've sailed up and down um, uh, England and I've climbed a lot uh, climbing the loft is quite good. You know, you can go up on the rattlings. You have three points of contact, uh, keeping your th- hand, it's a uh, metal sheet, so keeping your ha- feet on the rattlings and your hands on the on the metal sheets as you climb up. And you've got to connect onto the safety ropes as you get onto the platform. Um, and... Um, and then there's another platform that you can go up. On the difference between the um, Nelson and the Tenacious, on the Nelson there is the footix, which as you climb through the onto the first ma- platform, you go up to the second platform, uh, which is a hole to climb through, and you go on a left side to a right side, and you come up, and then there's a rope ladder that will go up to the top, and you can touch the button, and then you can come back down. But you've always got to get permission from the captain or the duty officers. Um, you know, so um, and sailing is it, it's it's quite a good uh, place to be on on the ships. Um, um, yeah. So, the, so uh, the, ju- the Jubilee Sailing Trust, then, John, is that just for people with sight? Or is that for other disabilities as well? Um, it's um, the, on the boat ships, they take 40 crew, which includes a watch leader. There's four watches in each, uh, on each, in each of the crews. There's two starboard and two ports, forward and aft. Um, and there's, usually it can be like half and half, so it could be 20 uh, disabled and 20 abled and they ask people who are able to fill in the forms to where uh, you know so that they can buddy but you can take somebody along to help buddy uh, you up you know because we had a Liverpool uh, trust uh, in to where uh, when we were funding and doing getting uh, disabled people to go aboard 
and like on board there are the diff- the, the, the variety of uh, access for different disability people so blind and visually impaired you have arrows on the port side which will point your way to the bow side and it will take you around the screws on the starboard side um, there's track rails on the floors uh, there's um, tactile pieces on the steps and and yellow um, uh, screen readers um, and for the deaf there's um, um, there's uh, um, accessible uh, vibrating pads and uh, uh, and lights uh, for the wheelchair users. There's um, uh, there's lifts on on to go onto the bridge and down to the uh, into the mess rooms. You know, because one side is, there's a step area, one side steps and one side's a ramp to come up and and be on the deck side. They also have uh, um, uh, seats for. Uh, adjusting for the being on the helm, the other uh, pins uh, so that they get for the holes in the floor near the decks so that they don't roll uh, off or roll forward or backward. Um, you know, there's joysticks for those with limb users to use the helm, um, and and there's you know for the vision impaired, there's the talking comfort obviously. Um, you know, so yeah, uh, and and like. You know, and um, some of the funding that I've got involved in is like um, we um, um, we we did a um, uh, we did we did a, a, a grotto outside Sainsbury's in in Walton, uh, and we borrowed a, a trailer from a farmer, and uh, we uh, made and um, painted deers in the arc class, and we put them on the side, we put a generator with lights and music coming out. I was an elf, uh, another friend, Chris was an elf, and a big guy said he was a, a, a captain on ships, he was Father Christmas. And like, they got, uh, uh, you know, the people coming in to use their store, that's why they allowed us, to, and we were taking pictures and people buying the photographs of uh, when we took, brought the kids up, because we had a, Bags of sweets, which we uh, put into little bags to give them when they uh, uh, and they buy the photographs, and we'd have buckets to wear so that they can throw money into, and we were able to raise money uh, to take a lot of different disability people on the ships. Um, there was also another time when we had a fate when uh, uh, one of the women from the writers group, Irene, had idea to get the bunker fireman. Uh, yeah, the big vats with the freezing cold water from the uh, siphons from the street, and it was like, who's going to be the dunk, the person to be dunked? Oh no, I tried to stand back, but it was me. So I had to climb up a ladder, sit on the ducking stool. Yeah, sit on the ducking stool, and like my mate who was going to be the buddy that time, Brian. He had all of the rope that connected to the seats and he had let go when we put through the balls to a cardboard fireman. But even when we didn't go go through, he'd still drop the rope and <laughs> fall down and it was like about 12 foot high and, and about two foot, three foot wide. Uh, you know, and as soon as I reached to get back onto the seats, no longer was it on the seat. I was back in the water, pulling myself up. Oh, it was freezing cold. It was, oh, I had to get about 10 showers later on to get myself sorted. But that's all I made it. Yeah, all in aid of sending some disabled people away on a tall ship. You know what I mean? Yeah. So just, uh, just the let some of the people know that when you, if they're not into sailing or sailing terms, when you say sheets, you don't mean a sheet, you mean a rope, don't you, John? Yeah, because like on board ship, uh, the ropes, uh, you know, there's, as some one of me uh, sailors, uh, the, the, the first mate said, it's all a bit of string, it's all rope, but you have ropes attaching uh, the sails because it's, boat ships are uh, a, a two square mass sails and a mizzen mass. And but like there's mass that come, and the difference also between the Tenacious and the, and the Lord Nelson, there's one extra sail. So there's the course, the lower top, the upper top, the gallant, and royal. And and the ropes 
full 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 yards round, which are the ro- yard arms which attach the sails, and then you have seats which are the ropes that pull the pull the corners of the of the sails uh, taut so that they're straight out, you know. And and you need a you need a a group of people on each rope to haul the ropes. Um, and then when it comes to a point where you need a few more, so people because you'll. People will be holding on to one side to let off, and others be holding on the other side to pull in. And once you've got it so much, you need other people to come and help you. And it's called sweating and tailing, where you pull the rope down as the roll of the sea, so that and then people are on the end to tail the rope. And then at the end, of, when it's all finished, you'll neatly coil it all up and put it to uh, 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 to onto the onto the pins. So. Yeah, it's 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 amazing, you know, uh, getting involved, you know, and enjoying the time, uh, you know, within the sea. Obviously, you can't control the weather. There's going to be stormy weather. There's going to be nice sunny weather. Some deck weather, you know, uh, which like one time during the happy hour when we were supposed to be working, we uh, climbed up onto the boathouse and some bathed and we got caught, so we had to go back to work. <laughs> you know, um, but like, yeah, it's good fun. It's enjoyable. Um, um, you know. So what, um, what what would you say the the best place or the best sail that you've been with them, John? I know you said you've been to the Canaries. Well, they've all been different because they've all been. Uh, people might say, "Oh, you've been on those sails so many times. Once you've done it, they must be all the same." No, they're not all the same because there's the, uh, you know, there's the banter, the camaraderie that goes on. There's the the places we've been to, you know, like uh, say for instance, the first sail was brilliant because it was my first sail, and uh, I got called Rocky because of uh, having a little bit of a tussle with one of the. My mates, so I got called Rocky from the guys in the uh, the the, the um, day centre. So when I went was on board, everyone was calling me Rocky, um, and like I, they had Rocky Bar. So one of the friends, girls that I knew, she she pinned that onto me, and I climbed up to the the mast on the first day because you have two days of climbing up. One day it's all everybody so that they can see if they can get involved or want to be up or loft. And then we have a disabled day where people will be hoisted up or they'll climb under orders. Uh, and this day, oh, it had to be, this, this sail was probably one of the most expensive sketches because I, I did a rocky sketch of coming out and I had my watch leader, my hands on my watch leader. I had the yellow wet gear that you get given at the beginning of the sail. Uh, I had my shorts, my boots on, and I walked out and I was pretending to fight um, the boatman. Uh, and one of the girls had written a number six, so when she changed it up, it was a number nine. And then I threw the towel in, which I had around my neck, and I went across to the table where there was all these young girls drinking all the spirits and everything, and I knocked all over their drinks, so I had to go and buy them all drinks later on. Uh, but, uh, but the Canaries, you know, I sailed from Liverpool in the, uh, the port and rain. It was port and rain, it was... Oh, it was dismal, it was cold, it was freezing. Uh, we sailed from Liverpool to Cork, and we were on watch that time. Uh, and then we sailed from Cork to the Bay of Biscay. Uh, we, we had a, um, a Russian ship come towards us, a, a, a freight ship, which uh, they found our ship. Uh, Claire, the captain, she could speak Russian, and we, was, we couldn't understand that why we had a woman say, captain, uh, and um, so we had to move off course to go round and to come back on course, otherwise we would have been gone as, you know. Uh, and that took us three weeks, more or less, three weeks, yeah. Uh, and we were under sail for uh, 97%, but because Claire thought we wouldn't make our berth, which is the, you know, the place where, as in cars, park up, uh, she thought we wouldn't make it, so she told us to put the engines on, because you'd have engines on sailing ships and boats. Um, and when we got there, we were there a day early, so she apologised. But never mind, we had an extra day. And then from there, that was northern Spain. And then from there, we, we sailed uh, to the Canaries, which was great. So three weeks. And then 
I ended up staying another two and a half months doing more sales, uh, going and staying in the hotel in La Palmas and, and, and getting back to the freezing cold of England. Oh, it was freezing. <laughs> So if, yeah. if anybody if anybody wants to have a go, John, how do they get to um, to go on the ships? Do they is is it an application process or? Well, yeah, you need an application. The the uh, the, uh, the um, offices in Southampton. So you'll get through to them, uh, phone number, uh, and uh, there's an address. Uh, so you'll fill in the. Uh, the forms you, you have to take a passport with you when you go aboard uh, there's a medical form that you've got to get as well from your doctor uh, or uh, you know your day center or wherever um, uh, and then you've got to get you take you, you've got to sort out insurance as well I mean the, the JST the Jubilee Sailing Trust probably could sort one out but it may be a bit more expensive uh, to do it that way but you know and also People may be able to do it through the banks as well for the insurances. Um, so, uh, and then when you go along, uh, you know, it's you go onto the up the gangplank, and they'll they'll uh, they'll introduce themselves. You know, they'll they'll take you along. It's really uh, you know aware on the ships because they'll they'll uh, make sure that you know and 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 you're there amongst everybody and you get to uh, meet and greet everybody you'll have your uh, introductions every sale that you go on even if you've done sales once before or whatever every time at the beginning of every sale that you do there'll be an induction of all the, the crew to tell you what's going to go where where, where it's going to go the captain will say where a to b of where the ship's going to go uh and uh, and the first mate is always the one who is in control yeah very good. So, are the places are they funded, or do you have to pay the full cost yourself, or how does that work? Uh, well, yeah, you, you have to pay the full cost, but you can get bursaries, uh, you know, which to give out to be, uh, give out to people who have got uh, lower incomes. Uh, but you've got to apply for those. I, I've never applied for one because I just think, you know, uh, with benefits and things, I've probably got enough when I've gone away by myself or uh, when we funded and gone with our Liverpool group in the past, which doesn't exist anymore because uh, my friend Frank passed away a few years ago and also uh, people were getting funded and uh, I haven't done a sale since, 19, since 2014. Um, but like, uh, bursaries, I'd, I'd say if you've got, got enough to do it yourself, go along because there are people out there it's a life-changing experience, and there's people out there who uh, would like to go, but if people are applying and got enough money to go for themselves, then, you know, there are people who, who take that bursary. And, they, and if you get a bursary, you need, they ask you to write up about your experience or tell yeah. people about it all, you know. So, and that's all the benefits, and, and they'll put it on their website and everything. When you're on a, when you're on the ship, each watch will do a blog uh, day by day, and people can follow the ship by website or uh, by every kind of social media and stuff as well. So they know if it's doing that that uh, voyage, you can uh, keep in contact. And if you've got your mates on board, you can probably keep in contact with them through the through the uh, you know with the blogs and the uh, you know the websites and everything. Sounds sounds good. Should we should we ask if anybody's yeah. got any questions, John? Okay, yeah. So has any, anybody got any, any questions yeah. for the, the yeah, talk? I'm, uh, I'm Brian, John. I'm Brian. And um, how much? Hi, Brian. Be, how much would it be if you was paying for yourself? Sorry, Brian. What did you say? How much would it cost if you were paying for yourself to go? It varies. It varies because a sale could be um, one week. A sale could be, you know, depending. Because like my time, I went to the Canaries. That was a three week, and that cost four hundred pounds. It varies depending, uh, and also because of all what's going on. The Lord Nelson, uh, it, it was just commissioned uh, in uh, two thousand and nineteen October, uh, probably because of the. Uh, 
lack of funding, lack of uh, funding for the organisation, and also because she is a high maintenance ship, you know. Uh, but like, you could get some because sometimes when we don't fill a ship, we will uh, they'll, they'll uh, sell uh, voyages off for dependent twenty quid a day or something like that. So you could get them cheap. You could get them, but you've got to always look at uh, you know be on their website or in touch with them to find out. And they will send you um, um, you know information once you've done a sale. Uh, that that's cheap though, four hundred pounds. I tell yeah. I thought it would have been a, in four figures. If yeah, I did. Well, that was for my, my time. Uh, you know, friends who I know, they've gone a uh, £1,000. You can do day trips as well to have tasters for like £99 or something like that, you know, because some people might go along and go, oh, I don't like this. Because even when I've done sales, some of the people that we who came along, they went for one time and they said, it's not for me. And that's obvious in life. You know, there are things there that are not, for people that you know, every activity is not for that person. Oh yeah, and and do they tell you what clothing you should wear when when you go in? What clothing you should take with you? Sorry, what do you say, Brian? Do they tell you what clothing you should take with you? What to keep you warm? Oh, they'll tell you what uh, what you, they'll send you out a list of what you need to take with you, uh, you know. Uh, and like sometimes once you've started going one time, because it's a bug. Once you go once, well, I say I think so as well. You'll get get into it, you're bitten by the bug, and you you'll know what to take. But when you go up onto uh, onto the bridge on on your watch, uh, you, you'll. Um, they'll give you all the weather so even though it's, it could be a, a, a sunny day you take all that plus all uh, stuff to be comfortable and also to be warm because you can always strip off because they don't like you going back down to your bunks especially when there was, it was different watches and everybody does uh, it's, it's like a four hour watch every day but then there's uh, watches called dog watches, which are two hours, so it cuts up the shift of every day, so that people aren't doing the same watch every day. Sounds good. <laughs> so when you're on watch, um, the um, what sort of navigation equipment do you use? Because it's such a visual affair, isn't it? I mean, I saw one example on a holiday program a long while ago. Where, it was uh, about disabled people on uh, tall ships, and there was a they were using a compass with speech synthesizer, you know, so that they knew how to keep a straight course. Because obviously, sailing you can't always sail straight there. Right, yeah, because like um, they do, they've got the uh, obviously they've got the helm on the on the bridge, uh, and and yeah. in the chart room there's a there's there's another. Uh, uh, like device to keep in control with that uh, helm, but then we do have sextants as well because they, they take people on deck and show them how to use sextants. But that's the old uh, way. But they've got the radars and they've got the uh, you know they've got the computers on board and they've got uh, like they've got the social media as well. They've got they've got everything there that they need you know and they've got the first mate uh, sorry second mate who's the navigator and he'll 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 sort out how the navigation goes on um you know so there are all their devices that they they need to use and they've got a compass there on 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 both sides on the bridge you know so there, there is yeah. every every device for the tall ships and they've also got the radios uh, so that they get control because when we go into different waters that's when you need your passports uh, you've got a uh, you've got to bring on a, um, a pilot to to have the ship steered on by law they say you know they'll and that cost to take the, the ship into harbor into the into the boat because they know those waters they know that harbor yeah because I, I think all ships have to have a radio haven't they of any decent size um because I know certainly the ob obviously anybody visually impaired keep keeping watch, you know, just ships in front of you in the distance. I don't just mean the uh, well, you know, not everybody's yeah, got but David, that David, you, vision, have they? You know, you don't want to go you, crashing into ships. 
Yeah, but you've got you. You know, everybody visually impairment. Everybody with it has a different visually impairment. But then you have your buddy who will yeah. help. Because when I first when I first went on the on the ship in uh, yeah. ninety eight, it was the Lord Nelson. I didn't know what to do, and we were first no. on watch. Uh, yeah. Like and like, um, it was the night shift. Oh called my the goodness. graveyard uh, shift. Yeah, it was a graveyard shift, which is the twelve o'clock to four o'clock, which where it's dead dark and everything. And I was sitting, I was standing around, going around, saying cr- uh, a few corny little jokes. But when the lights came up at eight, uh, you know, later on at eight o'clock, it was sort of like, oh, now I know why you weren't talking because you were all looking sick, you know, because I couldn't yeah. see. But you, you've got to, you've got to be on the bridge and you've got to do your watch. But you've got your buddies and and you know, you you can go on the, you'll be on the helm as well. So you've got your talking mm-hmm. compass, you know, and and you know, four hours so, uh, of your watches or your two hours, you've got to try and make it go. Because sometimes it seems like it's going slow because of the night time or not happening. Must get pretty boring sometimes. That in the middle of the sea, you know. So when, yeah, but... when you, John, when you're not on yeah. watch and you you're sort of on yeah. your free time, what what do you do? Can you just wander around the decks? Can you go and lie on the decks, sit on the okay, decks? Okay, yeah, like so. During the day, you've got you can wander around the decks. Uh, between uh, after around three o'clock, it's there's quiet time. So and there's doors that get closed, and you've got to know that you've got to respect those quiet times. And people can go to sleep or go if it's sunny times, go and sunbathe on the decks and stuff like that. People say because they have the uh, the boxes, the yellow boxes with the buoyancy aids in, uh, so people can go and sit on them. And and there's actually there's actually some uh, braille booths on board if you if you read braille about sails and uh, you know the the ships and everything uh, you know and you can uh, you can sit in the bar because uh, there is a bar bar area but it's there's only certain times that you can take the take the drinks and there is a trust bar where you take your drinks you put your money in and you can pay in sterling uh, euro or or um, um, American dollars you know and there's a list there with your drinks and uh, what yeah. You know, so, um, but like you know, you can you can you can just sit and, and play games. Like they have cribbage, they have uh, um, dominoes, they have um, uh, you know people play cards, and then there's people who bring on guitars. They've got guitars on on board as well, so people will sit there on deck and play guitars. And everyone, it's all there's banter, there's fun, there's enjoyment. It's not all just about uh, you know taking the ship from A to B and climbing up to the Unstow and stow sails, you know, which is letting letting out the sails and bringing them back up, you know. So go along, learn new skills, make new friends. Yeah, because like you don't I'm in touch. Uh, the bar, do you? <laughs> what? Say, I okay. like drunken sailor, if you've got a bar. Yeah. On board. Well, drunken sailor, because one of them is like you know there's a few terms that uh relate to shit that are in every day because like you have things like you know three you know three sheets to the wind but it's not actually three sheets to the wind it's three three sheets to the wind because you've got to let all the sheets <laughs> off to let it go in and then you've got like you know um you know what is it uh, ship shape, so you, that's where you get your happy hour, where you're keeping your ship shape, uh, you know, keeping yeah. it clean because salt, salt water always comes onto it, or or everybody's making a mess, you know. On on board, there's the heads which are toilets, you know. So yeah, uh, there's salt water ones, and there's a there's a fresh water ones, and um, you know, there's a shake a leg, shake a leg. Do you know what shake a leg means? No. It's no. like in it, on land, it, it, everyone says it so that people can say, "Come on, shake a leg, make quick." But when it was when sailors went out into sea and they and they and, and they got they go along and they and they pick up a, a lady. So when they were in, in the bunk, the, the, the duty officer would come along and say, "Shake a leg," and if a lady's leg came out, a female's leg came out of the bunk, they were allowed an extra half an hour. You know, <laughs> you know. <laughs> you know, scraping the barrel, scraping the barrel. A, a oh. sailor got thrown into a barrel of rum. 
you know, so he had to drink it before he could get out, scraping it, you know, that's where you go, scraping the barrel. Over the barrel, he got me over the barrel, it's a barrel, he leading them over the barrel and giving them a good lashing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, so there's, lo- there's lots that you can do while you're on, and you can even go climbing up the, up the, uh, up the, um, you know, the, the rigging, you know, it's, you know, did it's enjoyable to go. The well, the, the wooden uh, tracks that I was saying about for the visually impaired, I'd always go along as if I was going along, and you know, the tight rows or, you know, on the gang plank, and I'd always say things like, go on, we've got to go walk the plank here, put the plank <laughs> out, you know, and then there'll be people doing the, the yoga bits of like, I'm going, what are you doing? I'm doing the plank, <laughs> you know. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. You know, um, what what is the rigging? What what is the rigging? Is that the the mass? Sorry, what do you say, Brian? What what is the rigging when you said you can walk up the rigging? What is it? Right, the rigging. It's uh, it, it's um, on both sides of both mast. Uh, it's the rigging comes goes on a slope to the first platform, and there's rattlings. Uh, which wooden rattlings and and there's ropes, but you don't climb. You you, you use step on the rattlings, but you've got to hold on to the metal sheets, which are metal uh, rope that come down from the sails. Otherwise, you could cause accidents. If you hold on to the if you uh, have an accident, hold on to the the rope ones, or or try and hold on to the wooden slats while climbing, you're going to have an accident. Uh, and you know. Um, yeah. You know, uh, you know, and you climb up and you get onto a platform and then you can climb onto yards and uh, the yard arms uh, there's small thin ropes that you climb once you climb on you've got to say uh, stepping on port or stepping on starboard depending on which side you, you're uh, climbing onto uh, so that all those who are on, on the ropes on the, on the yard and you hang on you, you've got to lean over at times to get a bit of a clap and so it's like because you're up there and then you step on and, and you're up there to help pull in, pull in the sails which is like when you pull in a sail you pull a part of it and push it in so as if you're pushing it into a bag and you pull a bit more push it in push it in and you bring it above so it's a big roll and there's these basket ropes that are up there that you which are attached to a metal uh, horizontal lines called jack stays, which you bring around and then you and then you tie tie them in and out. So yeah, um, and then you back up, you know, and and then you climb back down, you know. And in the, in a watch, one person has to have a, a full harness on uh, so that they climb that that they they will climb up, you know, and um, um, you know, and at the beginning of each. Uh, voyage, we will do it in uh, drills like they'll get you to go to your mustard station, which is the main mast where everybody goes, so that they put on a buoyancy aid, uh, so that the that so that the uh, the crew know that people know how to put them on and 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 uh, clip them in. You know, it's a buoyancy one where it goes over your head and a belt comes from the the pad around in front of your waist around and 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 you tie it back on yourself. Um, and then photographs taken so that they know that you've done it. Um, and then there's a, a man overboard drill, which they use as resuscitate Annie. Uh, somebody will go up the, the mast and they'll throw that overboard and somebody will keep watching while they go. And when I was in the Canaries uh, or, or in, coming back from Weymouth, uh, they did a, a drill and... Um, we threw the Annie over on the port side of the boat in the sea, and we and we put the uh, dinghy boat down, and the uh, boatman and the first mate climb climbed down to get into the boat. And when they were in there, they were sort of like, "Come on, what are you doing?" The third, the second mate, so, sorry, second second engineer, it was. He was reading the uh, the manual. And then when they went, they picked up the body, the pretend body, they put it in the boat and they drove back. The boatman walked up the ladder and then he was sort of like getting hold of the, uh, the body from the 
second second engineer. And all of a sudden, he dropped it back in the water. <laughs> <You know? laughs> so, John, they always say about getting your sea legs and things, and when I've done any any days on the water, anything like that, I don't find that a problem. But like, for example, oh, like- when we've been to water park and uh, I've been on the water all day, when I come back at night and I'm sat around by the fire or I'm just laying in bed, I feel like I'm still bobbing about. Do you, do you find yeah, that yourself after three weeks? Yeah, yeah, because yeah, like when you're on 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 ship at first, uh, you know, when I first went and the first few times, it was sort of like the very beginning, and you're bobbling around as if you're like the you know the scarecrow on the Wizard of Oz or something like that, you know, <laughs> one foot forward, two feet back. But then you get used to it, uh, and people have taken like the you know the slip tablets, the yeah. uh, sea legs, and the stutterin and all that kind of stuff, but I felt it worse when I've got off the off off the that's, ship. That's what I found when I'm on, when I've been on to Yeah. So, mm. Yeah, when, when we've had a day sailing or messing about on the, the lake or anything like that. I know it's nothing like the sea, but even then when I'm lying down at night, I feel like I'm still bobbing about on the <laughs> on the water. Yeah. <laughs> even though when I'm when I'm sleeping in bed because on the bunks, uh you have bunks in the cabins and you have bunks in the forecastle, which is uh, the forecastle is the part below the uh, the the stern of the the boat. Was it sorry the bow of the boat? And like um, you, you know, the it's kind of like you have the these uh, uh, ties that you put on your on your on your bunks so that you stop you for when the boat rolls, when the ship rolls, to so stop you from falling out your bunks and your and your beds, you know. And when I come back home and I'm in my bunk, I'm sort of like keeping hold of myself, thinking I'm going to fall out my bunk. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, it sounds like it sounds uh, good fun, John. And uh, when's, I mean, obviously COVID permitting and everything, but when's the next one that you're likely to go on and where, where are you thinking of going? Well, I haven't done a sale since 2013 when we went for, uh, uh, got the train to Edinburgh, uh, Heading there to uh, Holy Island, which was really good. Uh, Scarborough, Bruges, and Bruges was really nice, you know. So, um, and um, you know, it was great to be out there, you know, and it's great to be on on a ship, uh, you know, sailing on the seven seas, um, and you know, going wherever, you know. But at the moment, I don't know uh, because the Nelly's out of this was discommissioned in 2019. Um, uh, the reason why I probably haven't done sales since 2013 is because the Tenacious went off on a, a long haul around the world and the Nelly went to Australia uh, for a while as well. Um, but like, I'm not too sure, but I'd like to because I've gone and done um, maintenance. They ask you if you want to do maintenance in different parts of the country where you go, uh, volunteer and you get uh, involved in painting doors or, you know, even you know, everybody disabled or able body. Um, and I've also been to Liverpool when the Nelly's been in Liverpool to um, to do open ship, which in 2008, I was doing maintenance and we said about doing open ship and we asked everyone to volunteer. I was like, oh, right, where shall I be? And everybody was volunteering and there was me and a few people left uh, and we went, okay, you all be together. And then when we sort of like opened the ship, I sort of got a bit anxious, a bit nervous, and I went, oh, what do I do? So I had my baseball cap on, I turned that around, I had a, an eye patch in my pocket, put that on, rolled my sleeves up, rolled my trousers up, I found a knife, uh, like a plastic sword, and I became a party, you know? And, and like, when they were all coming on to the ship, you know, dads and mums with kids in the in the trams and everything, they weren't interested in taking leaflets and stuff from there, they go, Daddy, no, he does a party! Let's go over there and see the party. <laughs> and I was giving it all, I'm putting them in the stomach and everything. It was fun. It was good. And then later on, later on, because it was there, uh, seven ships in the Wellington Dock in Liverpool. Uh, this was 2008. And we knew that Prince Andrew was uh, coming in. So when he came in, he wasn't in through those gates. Uh, people and passengers couldn't come in or go out. Everybody had to stay on, on the boats. Uh, and we'd set up a big table and the seven 
captains all dressed in their regalia and went out to meet him. We sat down and had a big meal, drinks and everything. And then we all went back to the ships and Prince Andrew came wandering around. And he came on the Lord Nelson, which is a dinky toy compared to all the other tall ships. And he goes, he sees me and he comes over, shakes me and he goes, so what are you doing? I'm a, I'm a pirate, sir. <laughs> and he goes, oh, right, okay. And I went, ah. And he goes, oh, I said, can you do, ah, and he did. And then I went, look up there. Look up there. And he looked up and I said, see that? That's where I climbed. And he went, he went you're a braver man than me. <laughs> oh, he's been in helicopters and everything. <laughs> But yeah, it sounds sounds good. So, have we got any any more questions before we before we wrap up? Does anyone yes, else? Yes, do you have to have? Do you carry spare sails? Because I would imagine with the wind out at sea, you know, surely some sails sure. must get torn. Yeah, there are uh, spare sails because, like, on the sails, they have a piece that is uh, attached to the sails called the sacrificial sail. So when they're all stowed up, when they're all brought up, that, that is the piece that gets all the sun and, and the weather. So when 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 there's maintenance, they'll, they'll unstitch that or cut it off yeah. and put a new part on. But, but down in the uh, the stores, under the ship, you know, because that's where the food's kept, and they have spare sails, they'll, they'll have spare uh, other bits and pieces and the sails, you know, so uh, during maintenance and also in in the different places like Southampton or Newport or wherever, or even on the ship itself when, uh, you know, when there's things not getting done, uh, the, the, the sails we're doing. And one sail, we sail back from, um, um, from, where did we sail from? Uh, uh, we sail through the Channel Island, we were coming back. We had Jennifer Guinness on board from the Guinness family. Oh. And like, at first she wasn't too sure because I took my little cuddly dog Mutley with me and it was like, stow away and all this kind of stuff. And she couldn't take, but at, at the, towards the middle of the sail, she was getting in oh. with it and it was stormy weather and the sail, oh, one of the sails that. fell down and, and broke down. So our watch had to sew up the sail. We had to sew up the oh. sail for part of our watch. Oh. oh, and you must have yeah, seen so, a lot of places because so you, you must stop at places on the way, you know. Well, there was, well, there was ten of ten of us in our watch, and people were holding on, and people were, you know, getting getting the soul. You know, there was no soul machine; it was all hand soul. <laughs> you know, you know. So, and whatever so and I did, you know, it, probably big stitches or whatever. I don't know. I can't remember. <laughs> you know. You know, I just have me mate going, what's your fingers? What's your fingers? Ow! Ah! You know, going, ah, you're pretending. You know. It all sounds great fun, John. So I um, just want to thank you for coming along and, and chatting to us about it. No, so, it's you're welcome. So is any of you going to go and do a sale? Because uh, I, I, you know, I, I really... I would say, you know, I'd really advise you all to go sail and, you know, take up the offer. It's a life experience, and if you don't, then you may regret it sometime. But and it's probably not for everybody. So even just having a go and trying and seeing it, you know, or just get involved with the the maintenance or the open ships. Well, there there is. Yeah. I mean, I know it's nothing like the the tall ships, but. Uh, once COVID's lifted, we will be doing sailing sessions again. I mean, we should have done a load last year, obviously with COVID and, yeah, yeah. and what have you. So, um, and that would be at Rivington, which I know it's nothing like the tall ships, but at least it gives you a bit of a, um, a bit of an idea of what it's like relying on the wind to to propel you. Yeah. Uh, I bet you love yeah. that, James. Oh, I, I do. Yeah. It's one of the plus parts of my job. Um, oh, no. I, say, I can see Stuart yeah. laughing his head off now. So. Go, going on the tall ships, I bet you'd love that three week journey on one of them. He gets yeah, paid for that as well. You think we can do it, Stuart? <laughs> I'm, I'm one, one we'll give the, it a go. One of the best. One of the best things is the food as well. The food is amazing on the ships. 
it's got the the kook and they say there's a one of the um kooks graham or oh, he's retired now but the others they'd say we we want to see you put so much weight on every day and they'll leave food out for when you're on the watches because in the cold and when you get a bit hungry or nibbly you'll go out and you'll go down to the mess and eat some so you will put some weight on uh, you know very good all right so yeah. thanks, okay. thanks again john thanks for for joining us um that's been a, a a really good insight into the the tall ship so if anybody fancies having a go then look it up it's the jubilee sailing trust um, i'm sure there's a website out there but if you fancy it get in touch with them or um i guess what contact you john if they want any more information is that yeah yeah so but but yeah that's that's great so um again thanks thanks for joining us on that john thank you john right, it's been it's been really thank you very cool. much cheers, cheers, dave. cheers dave cheers andy cheers everybody else who's there yeah. thank you brilliant john thank you, thank you.